Today we talk relations and functions, specifically one-to-one, -one, and we get a little bit into inverse functions. So a relation, and a relation is basically a set of ordered pairs, basically some kind of x and y mapping. A relation is going to be a function as if, if for every element in the input, there's one corresponding element in the output. So we notice that in this case here, that one has only one output of five, negative one has one output of five, zero has one output of three, two has one output of eleven, three has one output of twenty-one. Now in this function over here, which actually isn't a function, we notice four has two different outputs in this case. So this is not a function. Because an element of the input has two, two output pieces. But in this case, even though two different x's go to the same y, that's all right. Because an element in the input can't have two output values. So this is a function. All right. Now. Functions one to one, if for every element in the input, there's only one corresponding output element, and for every element in the output, there's only one corresponding input value. So you'll see here, here's a one to one mapping. Every element in the input goes to exactly one element in the output, and likewise, they'd all go backwards as well. You can see this. All right. But then in these examples, this is one to one. This would be one to one because it looks the same as this guy over here. This would be one to one. But in this example here, first of all, it's not a function because every element in the input doesn't go to one element in the output. All right. Doesn't go backwards and forwards in this case. So, definitely not one to one there. Now, the way to test these is to look at something called a vertical and horizontal line test. If a function is drawn in such a way that you can take and draw a vertical line through any point in the function, and that vertical line only crosses at one point, then that graph is a function. If you want to know if it's one to one, you draw a horizontal line test. And you draw a horizontal line through anywhere in the function. And if that horizontal line crosses only in one point, you know it's a one to one function. Notice this horizontal line here, this horizontal line here crosses in multiple points. So this is not one to one. But it is a function. We talk inverse functions. We talk about, graphically at least, functions being symmetric over the line y equals x. So I've drawn a couple of here. When something's symmetric, it basically folds over. In other words, this line of symmetry, y equals x, will be a perpendicular bisector between the two reflected functions. So that point there, is equidistant from this point here over that line. And you'll notice both of these kind of fit that bill. Now, one of the tests for symmetry over the line y equals x is if you were to take your initial point, and here's my image point, the x and y values just switch. And you can see that in this graph over here. Let's find a nice point. Here's a point. 5, 2. And if this is truly symmetric, then the point 2, 5 should exist over here. And it does. You'll notice if I draw a line from one point to the other, those are 
perpendicularly bisected by the line y equals x. So if I give you a problem like draw the inverse of the graph of 2 times the absolute value of x. Let's first draw 2 times the absolute value of x. It's going to look something like this. draw that line the best that I can. And then I'm going to have to draw in my line of symmetry. My symmetry line should be y equals x. And rather than being super specific and really trying to get equal distances from this line of each point, all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip all the x and y values. I know this is the point 1, 2. So the point 2, 1 should be on that curve. This is the point 2, 4. So the point 4, 2 should be on that curve. 3, 6, 6, 3, Let's go to the other side now, negative 1, 2, so 2, negative 1, negative 2, 4, so 4, negative 2, and negative 3, 6, 6, negative 3. I'm going to draw that. So this red line is my inverse. Now, while it's an inverse, we see that the inverse in this case is not a function. But you can still have an inverse. So if we want to find inverses algebraically, two steps. Switch the x and the y, and then solve for y. So here's my function. I have a cubic. If I want to find its inverse, I switch the x and the y. So I make this x equals 4y cubed minus 30. I'm going to solve for y. So I bring the 30 over. Divide by 4. And if I want y by itself, I've got to cube root it. So this is going to be the cube root x plus 30 over 4. And this is going to be my inverse. This one's a little bit tougher. We're going to switch the x and the y's again and then solve. So if I switch the x and the y's, I have x is equal to 2y plus 3 over x plus 1. y plus 1, sorry about that. And then I'm going to try to solve for y. And the only way to do this is get everything kind of off the denominator and onto the same level. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y plus 1. And we've got to get all the y's to one side of the equation now and in basically the numerator. So I'm going to distribute through first. Again, group all the y's on one side. So I'll bring the 3 over. And the xy over. But the only way to isolate y is by factoring. So I pull y out. I have 2 minus x times y. And I have, that's equal to x minus 3. Isolate the y by dividing. So I have x minus 3 over 2 minus x. This is my inverse. So it's a rational expression. So in this case, we're going to actually verify that two functions are inverses using compositions. And the way that's done is you're going to show that composition of f of g of x is not only equal to the composition of g of f of x, but those two are also equal to x. And here are the two functions I'm claiming are inverses of each other. 
So let's first do f of g of x. which is basically f of x plus 7 over 3. So I have 3 times x plus 7 over 3 minus 7. 3 is reduced. That's x plus 7 minus 7, which is equal to x. So far, so good with the first one. Now we're going to find g of f of x, which is the same as g of 3x minus 7. So I look at the g function, and that's 3x minus 7 plus 7 over 3 which gives me 3x over 3, or x. Since f of g of x was equal to x, and g of f of x is equal to x, I verified this. That's all we've got. Do your summary and your mind math lab, and we'll see you tomorrow.